Hello everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics, another tutorial on Wirecast, except this time we're talking about how to bring Skype into Wirecast, whether it's Skype or GoToMeeting or WebEx, whatever video conferencing software you want to use to bring in those remote participants from anywhere into the world, into your live stream, into your live broadcast, whether you're going to YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're going, really. Um, to help us kind of frame this up, actually before I do that, there's two tutorial videos. So if you missed, so a lot of people don't know what they're actually looking for. There's two ways to think about this. You can bring Skype into Wirecast, and that's what we're doing in this video, to host a talk show, okay? Or you can bring uh, Wirecast into Skype. And that's really just for a video conference with a little pizzazz, allowing you to use a green screen in a video conference or a lower third. So in order to, to kind of to frame this up, I have a 3D rendering of our studio. And as you can see here, I sit in that chair right there with that little laptop. And I have all my cameras in the front. I have a projector in the front with Wirecast. And then I have a secondary monitor you can see on the right-hand side where I run my video conference, whether it's one person or five people, that's where my video conference is. And you really have to have two monitors, okay? At least one camera, you don't need uh, one, uh, you need two microphones, you can't just have one microphone, you do need two really. And um, you also need to have virtual audio cables. And I'm gonna show you guys what that is in a second here but those are the things that I've used to host our live shows we host our live shows all the time and they they always run really well so let's take a little bit of a deeper look at this so within Wirecast the very first thing we want to do is we want to do a desktop capture of our secondary monitor so whatever's on the secondary monitor um, is going to be brought in as a video source Okay, it's very simple, it's easy to use. But we also want to send the output of Wirecast back into Skype, GoToMeeting, or WebEx so that our uh, far end participants can see what's going on during the live show. So they know when they're on layer. It's called, it's called return video in broadcast. So that's, that's what we're basically doing here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And part of the last tutorial will kind of lead into this but it is different um, and what I want to show you guys next is we need to get virtual audio cables installed and th these is a really interesting um, piece of software that I've found that that this is so affordable you don't need to buy a five thousand dollar box to do live broadcast with uh, with Skype you can literally do it with a with a pretty beefy i7 PC and virtual audio cables and two monitors so once you've downloaded VB audio software I'm not going to download it in this tutorial you just download it here and it basically makes a, and this is for Windows. This whole tutorial is for Windows. I have no idea how to do this on a Mac. I, I would imagine there's a secondary software for Mac. There is, we've actually made another video on how to do this with Macs. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Um, you can actually do this with, a, if you're a Mac user, I know a lot of Wirecast users out there are Mac. The way to do this is a little bit different, and it might not be that much more expensive, but you get a second MacBook, or sorry, Mac Mini, okay? And then you just, you, you set everything up for, for your video conference on a Mac Mini, and then you just take the HDMI video and audio out into a frame grabber, and you grab that in, in, as, as a USB source in your Mac, and then it's just audio and video, it brings right into Wirecast, and you can do whatever you want with it. But this tutorial, I guess, is really for uh, Windows users. We've already done the uh, tutorial on how to have basically a second PC that you set up with your video conferencing software. You take the audio and video via HDMI, plug it into a frame grabber. You can get them from Magewell for like $299. And it's basically a USB source to Wirecast for video and audio. So that isn't one way to do it. I'm, actually, I'm glad I mentioned that actually. But the way I'm gonna show you, I think is a little easier. It's, I think it's less expensive. You get these virtual audio cables. Okay. Once they're installed, they act as both a microphone and a speaker. 
which is very interesting. And that's what makes this whole magic happen. So if we go over to our desktop capture here, one of the things I want to show you is if we go to join audio, what we're going to be prompted in is basically this is the same for almost every video conferencing software. There's a speaker and there's a mic. Okay? Speaker and a mic. Now your microphone should be something on the table that to, so it could be a cheap mic. We use a Huddle Pod Air. Uh, it's a really nice little wireless USB speakerphone, but anything really, any microphone, you need one for your broadcast going to YouTube Live, and then one microphone, a separate microphone to go back to your audience so they can hear you. Uh, your people, are, or not your audience, your your video conference viewers. So I'm going to pick my Huddle Pod Air. That's what I always choose there. You can hear my voice going there. And then for the speaker, we're using the virtual audio cable. And what that does is it allows us to basically pull in, pump audio to it, and then pull it in to back into Wirecast. Because that audio for, that's meant to go into the speaker is what's coming from our far end. That's coming from our, um, our, uh, our people around the world on our video conference. So if we go in here to capture devices and we pick virtual audio cable one, okay, join audio, unmute, and I'm just gonna go in here and, and there's usually a setting to go test speaker Ah, see how those levels are going? That's because it's playing a test level there. So now my audio from the far end from my video conference participants is coming through to Wirecast just the way I want it. And sometimes I, you can, you, there's a little bit of control here if, if you know, because you don't have a heck of a lot of control on audio quality, but just Ask your, your people who you're video conferencing with to use a headset microphone. Don't use like the built-in microphone on your laptop. We did a whole video series on what to suggest uh, microphone-wise as well. But that's a, those are available on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, I usually just tamp it down a little bit so people don't peek out. And that's it. So you got your audio. And then your video. We talked about this in our last, but our output virtual camera out is on that's what's coming through right here okay that's what that is so you're sending your return video and then the last thing you have to do which i don't even have to show is, is uh, basically a screen capture right so you have to capture the screen of the video conference so that that would be you know full screen here i, I hope that makes sense so i'm just going to show this one more time because I think actually even I have a more zoomed out one here. Let me go back a little bit. So this is my studio here, okay? Um, you can see there's actually three monitors in the front. That left one I don't even use. Sometimes if I, if I need a third monitor, I have it. But really what I use is the center monitor for Wirecast and the right monitor for my video conference. And it's all one PC hooked up to two monitors and you can easily do a desktop capture of the video coming from your video conference okay pull that into wirecast and you can put it in your virtual sets you can use it in a whole bunch of different ways the point is you're getting the video from around the world and if you do have five or ten video conference participants you can use gallery view there's also a mode for speaker view so the whoever's speaking will show up first so it's automatic camera switching which is really nice and then the virtual audio cable is just to pump the audio back in. Uh, the other way to do it is to have the dedicated little Intel Nook or Mac Mini and take the HDMI and video and audio that way. But we've found that this is usually the best way to do it. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let us know. We, we, we really want to help you out. And uh, this is a popular question, so we wanted to answer it for you all. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. You can catch our live shows every Friday at 11 a.m. 2 p.m. Pacific. Or 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.